Welcome to this video about this month's new moon in Taurus. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mikas, and I'm in San Francisco, California. So in this video, we're going to tell you about this moon, including what it will feel like, when it's happening, and the best ways to handle it. Well, this new moon in Taurus happening May 19th is... Um, loaded absolutely chock full of harmony and no stress at all which we need actually after the eclipse season that we just had it was pretty intense this is a new moon which we know because the sun and the moon are here together lands in taurus with a big pile of planets in taurus actually so so much grounding and uh connectedness to the body and the earth uh happening in this moon and um, so a new moon does bring a quality of birth and freshness and newness, uh, which is just lovely. And it, the fact that it falls in Taurus, which is a very fertile sign, and also the sign where the moon is exalted. So that just makes it even nicer. I like to quote Shakespeare when I see a Taurus moon because the moon itself is about change. That's the meaning of the crescent, uh, the way that the moon goes through its phases all the time. It's always changing. As Shakespeare said in Romeo and Juliet, the moon, the inconstant moon that monthly changes in her circled orb. And the changeable moon is exalted in Taurus because in this sign it finds stability, constancy, groundedness, and, uh, and fertility as well. Uh, moon in Taurus is a great thing to find, you know, in your transits or in your own chart. Um, if, uh, if you want to be a mother. Mm. Uh, so this is a fertile and well-founded beginning here and, um, and a great time to begin something that you want to be solid and well-grounded. And then we see all this harmony too, two trines, one to Pluto, one to Ceres, and two sextiles, one to Neptune, one to Mars. Help is coming from so many quarters. Neptune brings support from the worlds of dream and spirit Ceres balances that, you know, it opposes Neptune, balances that by bringing support from the practical world. Pluto brings transformation that can be easy and smooth and doesn't even have to hurt. And Mars brings the spark of life to spring into action in cardinal cancer. So, so much good stuff here, Julia. What mm. are you thinking when you're looking at this moon? that I'm really excited, <laughs> um, you know, so this will be, you know, a lovely time in the month um, to get a lot of different projects off the ground, like a new moon in Taurus, like you mentioned, great for fertility, if you're trying to conceive, uh, would be really great for like starting a garden, would be really great for spending time in nature, maybe adopting a new animal, mm. uh, doing anything cooking related. Um, maybe taking a course on cooking. Um, and, you know, Taurus is also a beautiful sign. So anything that's kind of beauty or aesthetic related, uh, I think would be favored here. Um, it's just, it's, it's a very cozy, warm, um, kind of pleasurable new moon. And yeah, it's, it's really happy to see. Um, what else are you thinking on here? Well, the title that we've given this moon is a blend of all of the factors in it. Gradual, well, that's the Taurus part. Transformation, that's the Pluto part. Fuels, well, that's series, series feeds. Uh, Mars does too. Uh, intuitive brings in Neptune and Pisces and action incorporates that Mars. So it just kind of puts it all together. Um, all those factors are smoothly and easily integrated into this moon. New moons are new beginnings, and this is a stable and strong beginning. And because this is a good moon for conceiving, if you're wanting a baby, this is a good time to do it. And as Julia mentioned, you know, fur babies are also completely legit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great time to adopt an animal. Great time to adopt a new diet. I know that isn't something that you actually adopt in the same way, but, you know, join Noom, do the Whole30, uh, go paleo, go vegan, whatever, 
you know, uh, floats your boat. Um, but but also because this is such a fertile moon, if you don't want a baby, you'd probably draw on your contraception during this moon. I would be yeah. especially careful. Um, it reminds me, you know, because the moon in Taurus is already good for fertility, but the trine to Ceres, which rules oh, yeah. Taurus, just takes it over the top. And this reminds me of how the Celts and other pagan peoples of Europe used to have sex in the fields around this time of year to encourage the crops to grow. Oh. I mean, that's what the Maypole ceremony is all about. Oh, I see. Yes. Oh, and uh, that's where we got the Easter egg from, too. Oh. It's all pre-Christian. This is an affirmation of the place of birth and the circle of life. And anything, whether it's a child, a book, a business, a job, uh, a diet, a uh, a pet, any endeavor at all benefits from this support if you bring it, uh, if you begin it under this moon. Hi, Jamie here. I just wanted to say thank you for watching this video. And if you're enjoying it, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Your support helps keep this content free, and you can also get access to workshops where I will cast your chart live in the workshop. The link can be found in the description below. Thanks again, and let's get back to the video. Um, do, you have any, do you have any thoughts in particular, Julia, about some of the influences of these specific planets, Neptune, Pluto, Ceres, Mars, and what they, what they contribute to this moon? Well, Mars and Pluto definitely contribute a lot of sex drive. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Off the bat there. Especially and again, we go back to the fertility thing, but Mars being in Cancer, you know, um, but because these these two planets both deal with sexuality in different ways. And so does the moon. You know, the moon is a kind of a sexual planet in its own way. Um, and you know, I think Ceres really, really um underlines the the Taurusness of this moon. You know, you you often say that uh Ceres is exalted in Taurus. So again, it's just kind of it's that moon in Taurus with a few exclamation park uh, points. And then Neptune adds a little bit of gentleness. It adds a little bit of, I don't know, especially in Pisces, even a little bit of a, a psychic quality uh, to it as well. You know, maybe a little bit of a spiritual quality in there. Um, yeah, it's just a lovely, lovely new moon. Yeah. Yep. Who's going to feel this? Well, um, if you have any planet in your chart at all between 23 and 29 degrees of a fixed sign, that part of your chart is going to feel this moon the most strongly and really benefit from it. And uh, also, if you have anything in the very early parts of a mutable sign between zero and three degrees, so these are the fixed signs right here, these are the mutable signs right here, and that lets you go to your own chart to see whether you know, things are being impacted. Now, when it comes to your sun, uh, we can know whether this moon impacts your own sun by your birthday. The birthdays that are going to feel this the most would be those uh, Tauruses and Geminis born between May 14th and 25th, and the Leos and Virgos born in August between the 16th and the 27th. Then the Scorpios and Sages born in November from the 15th to the 26th, and the Aquarians and Pisceans born February 12th to 22nd. Well, that's all for today. In this video, we gave you a lot of clues about this moon and how you can handle it for best results. And we really love making these videos for you. And if you love them too, then please hit that like button. We make these videos for you for free. And if you appreciate it, Supporting us on Patreon is the best way to show it. Let your friends know about our videos too. Enjoy your May. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye.